Over the last few months I've had quite a few people get in touch with me to say they've enjoyed watching my hi-fi videos and it's encouraged them to start putting together a retro hi-fi system of their own. So I thought I'd better do a video about how you go about connecting all these things together. You see it's not as simple as it looks. If you get a modern amplifier you'll soon find out that you start running out of inputs which is one of the reasons why I've got a retro amplifier. It gives me a few more inputs and outputs for two different tape machines but still it didn't take me long before I outgrew that as well. But you'll never find an amp with inputs for a record player, a reel-to-reel, -reel, a DCC, a Tefifon, an 8-track, a digital music player, an L cassette, cassette deck 1, cassette deck 2, and Blu-ray player. I suppose you could put them all into some sort of home cinema amp, but I didn't really want to put a modern home cinema amp in the middle of my retro hi-fi system. So this is where an RCA switch box comes in handy. This particular one here will let me switch between three different devices and put them into the same amplifier. Of course, I need more than that. I've got eight different things, and therefore I had this eight-way switch box, which was really designed as a video switch box. You've got left and right stereo and composite video in and out, but I was using it just for the audio components, and it was working fine, other than the fact it does look a little bit well, should we say ugly? I quite like the kind of Doc Brown, Mad Professor type aspect to it, but it isn't really in keeping with the rest of the equipment and needed to go. However, to get something to replace it, I had to go back in time. Now, if you go way back, you can find there were things called a program selector. Pioneer made one. It was called a U24, and it enables you to put lots of different inputs into it and switch between them. But you have to go back to the sort of 70s to find one of these things. Very collectible, fully mechanical inside. It doesn't require any power. You're just switching between things mechanically. But look at the prices of them. These things demand a certain price because nobody's made anything really like them since. And if you need to switch between a lot of different devices and you want it to look nice and in keeping with the rest of your hi-fi, you expect it to pay for it. Well, there's no way I'm going to pay that for a switch box. So let's just park that idea to one side for a moment and talk again about another thing that I think is missing from modern amplifiers. And that's any sense of fun or enjoyment. They seem like very serious, business-like, purposeful devices. I like a little bit more frivolity from my electronics and as I've mentioned many times in the past I like to see a nice dancing VU needle or an electronic vacuum fluorescent VU display. Now back in the 70s and 80s if you had an amp without a display on it you could pop down to Tandy or Radio Shack and pick up the audio power meter and add a giant VU display to your existing amplifier. Now I've managed to get hold of this old one here. I'll just show you the back of it first of all. You can see you plug your speaker input there and then the speakers attach those clips at the bottom if you want them to and you select 4 or 8 ohm on there. And then on the front of it you'll get a nice big VU meter display. Now there are some other ways to connect it up as well. You don't have to run your speakers through it as such. I'll show you that now. Inside the box as well there were also cables in there which enable you to connect it up to your existing speakers. We've got banana plugs and we've got crocodile clips. And the banana plugs have holes in them so I can run my existing speakers through those banana plugs like that. I don't know if that's exactly how you're supposed to do it but this is just for demonstration purposes. Don't worry too much about it. And then the other speaker I'm attaching the crocodile clips to those. So let's power it on. It does need to be plugged in of course to work this thing and also it needs you to turn the volume up quite a way before it registers on those needles. So let's just have a listen. Now this device is a bit of a lightweight plasticky thing. It's fine that it's still working, but it isn't quality by any stretch of the imagination. But still, it's a neat idea, and I think the manufacturers are missing a bit of a trick here. Imagine you had a switch box, and you combine that with a VU meter that you could plug into your existing system. Wouldn't that be a good idea? It turns out it was a good idea, at least it was in 1977 when Onkyo brought out their U30 system unit. It enables you to select between three different phono or phono sources, three different tuners, two tape machines, and of course it's got those nice VU meters on there. 
Now, it does also have another couple of things. You can do, use it as a preamp. You can mess between stereo and left and right mono. You can plug your headphones into it and select between a couple of different speaker sources as well. Now, I'm not going to be running my speakers through this. In fact, I'm not really using it exactly how it was designed. I'm going to be plugging lots of different sources into it and just using it as a switch box to switch between them because it looks good. But if I'd bought this in 1977, the equivalent price of it nowadays would have been round about a thousand pounds. Luckily on eBay, they're a lot less than that nowadays. In fact, for mine, I paid quite a bit less than the lowest price that you see on there. I got one at quite a bit of a stip, so I'm quite happy with mine, although it is a little bit beaten up and needs some TLC. There's a few scratches here and there. You can see on the left VU meter at the top, there's a bit of a chip on the glass, but more importantly, when you turn out the lights, you can't see it, which means that the bulbs in the VU meters have gone, which means I have to take it apart. Now, having a look inside here, you can see it's a pretty simple machine as well. We've got the switches that operate the different selectors at the back, purely mechanical. You can uh, go between the different sources when the power is off. It doesn't require power for that. The power just operates those VU meters and the bulbs that we're trying to get to now. So I've got to take the switches off the front of this, which will enable me to slide the front of the machine apart. Of course, it's all made out of quite strong, heavy metal. It's good quality construction, definitely. But luckily, there's one bulb left in it. I don't know what happened to the other ones. There's supposed to be four bulbs there. There's one there. I'll unscrew that. I'm glad there was one left because that enables me to find out which type of bulb I need to buy to replace it. Of course, this has a little bit of a blue film on it. I wasn't able to find any like that, but I was able to find some replacement bulbs on eBay. Uh, so I've got five of those just in case one of them doesn't work. And I'll screw them into the front here. Now, I looked around to see if you could get blue film, and you can, although I'd have to import it from America. So I think for the moment, I'll do without. Let's flick the switch and see what it looks like. Yeah, that looks nice and bright. So let's put the front on it and see if it illuminates fine inside. Yep. Yeah. Brilliant. Everything seems to be working fine. So before we put it all back together, let's just do a bit of cleaning because this has got a few sort of nasty stains here and there. I don't quite know what's happened to it. Importantly, while I've got it on the table here, I'll use some contact cleaner on those switches to make sure they don't crackle when you move between the different sources. And finally put those switches back on the front again. Now, the job that everyone dislikes, wiring. And to rewire this hi-fi system was a bit of a nightmare, as you can imagine. There's more going on than just switching between inputs. There's also things going off to tape machines here. So it's a pretty complex setup. However, it does work with the slight issue of the things on the buttons don't correspond to what's actually going on. They don't have three tuners and three phonos and things. I've got two tapes though. Anyway, I know what everything is and that's all that matters. It's quite good having a hi-fi system that nobody else can operate other than you. It's a little bit like Biff's car where he's the only person that can start it. As much as I like my Onkyo U30, I'm aware that I'm not using it exactly how the manufacturers intended, but it's ridiculous that I can't buy anything that's like this nowadays. This is the closest thing that I can find that'll do the job that I need, and it was made in 1977. Why is nobody making anything like this nowadays? After all, a lot of modern hi-fi equipment still connects together using their good old RCA connector, a connector that's been around since the 1940s, and it still works fine. It enables me to switch between two different devices that were made 60 years apart just by flipping a switch. So I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person that wants to plug more than a couple of things into their existing amplifier, or the only person around that likes to see a nice VU meter when music's playing. So just think about that if you're a manufacturer. Have a look at the thing that's on screen now and think of a way that you can make something like this Frankenstein's monster, tart it up a bit and then knock it out for say 200 quid. And then you can thank me for the idea later on. But that's it for the moment. Actually, no, it isn't this time. I've got to mention something quickly. I've now gone on Patreon. If you fancy throwing a dollar in my direction to help contribute towards future videos, I'm on patreon.com slash techmode. But that really is it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.